Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay. Today, we continue to look at the Dylan Rounds case. We recently got a huge update and looked through the document of the charges that uh, Brenner will be facing. If you've never heard of this case, I would highly recommend checking out my playlist on the case and also the previous episode we did because I did a full recap. We went over the entire case from the top to the bottom. So I hope that you will watch that if you do need to catch up. So happy Friday to you. Yes, I can see you all here. Excited to be on a Friday. If you're watching the replay, doesn't matter what day it is, then thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that whenever you're watching this, that you will hit the thumbs up. That helps a lot. Um, and if you could also share the episode, hashtag Dylan Rounds, justice for Dylan Rounds and Grizzly True Crime. That would be amazing. Okay, so... Let's just see what you guys are saying. Thank you for the, the sunflowers that you are sharing. So what I wanted to bring to you today is the interview that Dylan Rounds' parents did with Nate Eaton on East Idaho News because they shared just a little more detail than, of course, what the document shared. So I thought that could be interesting to go over together in case you haven't seen it. Um, you know, it talks about the, the time lapse that was caught on his phone and possible motives and a gut feel and things like that. So I thought we could we could do that. Let me quickly show you this article just as a quick recap. So they say Utah farmer Dylan Rounds remains missing as prime suspect charged with murder. Dylan Rounds, a teen farmer from Idaho who set out on his own in Utah and was expecting his first harvest when he vanished last year, remains unaccounted for one week after police charged his ex-con neighbor with his murder. James Brenner, 59, shot a man at Maryland campground in the 1980s over a work dispute, court records show, and has been in custody since July after police found the felon unlawfully in possession of multiple firearms following the disappearance of Rounds, who was 19 when he was last seen, and he would be 20 today. Fox Elder County authorities announced the murder charge last week after they said they had recovered Rounds' phone and an incriminating video on it allegedly showing Brenner wearing bloody clothes and cleaning a gun. Deputies found the clothes and Rounds' DNA on them, according to authorities. Brenner was squatting on land next to Rounds' property and where authorities found the missing man's boots and farm truck, according to court documents. They found blood on one of the boots as well as Brenner's DNA, according to the criminal complaint. Deputies first identified him as a suspect over the summer after his arrest on firearms charges. Now he faces a charge of aggravated murder as well as abuse or desecration of a body and is accused of concealing Rounds' remains. Candace Cooley, Rounds' mother, told Fox News Digital at that time, or at the time, sorry, that Brenner was an acquaintance of her son, disputing the description in court filings which refer to him as a family friend which we're going to see in this um, interview as well there has been some media articles you know say a family friend James Brenner but <laughs> uh, Dylan's mom is like he is not a family friend okay so I'm keeping it together as best I can she said at the time Brenner's past criminal history includes malicious wounding, malicious shooting, and three prior convictions for being a felon in possession of a firearm, court record show. The defendant has no work history and is currently unemployed and has no verifiable residence, court documents state. The defendant was trespassing and squatting on property. As part of their search for rounds, investigators served several search warrants. Two of them led to federal cases against men who had interacted with Rounds before his disappearance, Brenner and Chase Fenstra. When police announced the murder charge against Brenner last week, they also ruled out the potential involvement of Venstra or any, any other suspects in Rounds' disappearance. According to, okay, so they said the evidence supports that James Brenner is the only suspect. According to a neighbor identified in court documents as D.H., at some point after Rounds' disappearance, Brenner asked him to conceal three black powder guns and a 22 caliber rifle without a serial number. After being contacted by the FBI, DH, which we know is Don from the farm, right, gave the weapons to authorities. Citing past felony convictions, they charged Brenner with being a felon in possession of a firearm. 
When Dylan Rounds was not located early on in the search effort, the investigation focused on the possibility of Dylan being the victim of a crime, Palmer told Fox News Digital at the time. An Idaho native, Rounds went out on his own as a teenager to build up his own farm in Utah, according to Cooley. He had a passion for the work and spent no time playing video games or on social media like others his age, she said, and he did not use drugs. She suspected foul play almost immediately when family members lost contact with him. Palmer had previously issued a blunt warning to anyone who may have been involved in Rounds' disappearance. If somebody's laying low that was involved in this or knows something and they think they lay low long enough, we're just going to go away? That's not going to happen, he told Fox News Digital. We're going to keep at this until we get answers. The search for Rounds' remains is ongoing in a rural area dotted with abandoned mines and cave systems. We are hopeful that they'll be found, Palmer said. Anyone with information is asked to call the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office at 435-734-3800. Okay, so I hope that caught you all up. Now we're going to look at this right here. I will um, put it in the description box as well. East Idaho News with Nate Eaton. Dylan's parents have done lots of interviews with Nate Eaton um, on East Idaho News. So we're going to look at this latest one. I'm going to put the closed captions off because it is on right now on my stream as well. So yes, this is a picture of Dylan Rounds. I mean, he was 19 years old. Just with a dream to farm. And the man that is now suspected of his murder... Sounds like he had quite the past as well, you know, and quite the temper. So let's have a look. Rob says, I hope that he's found soon. Let's see. Mary Ann says, bring Dylan home, please. Barbara says, he looks like a hardworking young man. Thank you to everyone for sharing sunflowers. Sunflowers were some of his favorite flowers. And last year, um, his mom asked everyone to plant black-eyed Susans, which are... Um, also yellow flowers, and, you know, I think it was just a little too late to plant them, but now everyone's planting sunflowers, which I think is amazing, worldwide. So, and I see lots of pictures being shared as well on Twitter, so please keep doing that as well. Papa Bear says, these poor parents, great admiration for their tireless efforts on behalf of their son from the very beginning. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, let's have a look at this. Times there should be charges, there's enough evidence for charges. We've been so frustrated with that. So, our reaction is finally it's about time. Was there any sense of surprise or shock, or was it more of good? Let's get this going. Yes, let's get it going. Let's get it going. We've known, we've yeah. known from the first day we were out there. We just had to fight to get this far. So, for us as a family and for Dylan, it is a huge win. This cannot be swept under the rug. This cannot go away now. It's out there. Charges are filed and we can start moving forward. I am going to be interrupting this a lot um, for commentary. So if you are here for my commentary, awesome. If you want to watch uh, this video without any Gizzle K in it, just go to East Idaho News and you can check it out there. Okay. So what I already noticed here is, remember Dylan's uh, parents they were previously married. They divorced. And, you know, like we saw in the Gabby Petito case, how the families, um, both couples, just they became so close, so connected. And here as well, initially, I mean, um, you know, they didn't look as close as they are now. They just look like they, they're, they're so, you know, connected with this fighting for their son. And it's just beautiful to see. Okay, so there's that, and now listen carefully, because I mean, I've taken a few notes as well, because along the way, because I'm like, sorry, what did they say? And they, they, they share a lot of little details and insights that are very interesting in this interview. One of the things that surprised me in the probable cause document <laughs> was that they wrote, the prosecutor wrote that there was video of Brenner cleaning a gun as he had blood on his shirt and arms. I mean, that, that's pretty detailed. Right. And and they believe that I guess that was shot right after the crime. Do you have any further insight on that? So so we know Dylan was at the gate when he called Brenner. I think it was six fifty seven or somewhere around there. So we know Dylan was at the gate to get on to get in then. So then if you give it another five minutes, he's up at the shed 
seven, seven oh two, seven oh three. Is this AM? Yeah. So after he called his girl. Isn't it so shocking when it's like first thing in the morning? This 19-year-old kid is out there. He just wants to put his um truck in the grain shed because he doesn't want his seeds to get all rained on and to get all moldy. So he's just like, hey, can you open the gate? You know, calling the people who live right there, which would be Don and Brenner, so early in the morning. And to think that he was murdered so early in the morning, I don't know, that just shocks me. It always shocks me. If there's a crime, like, first thing in the morning, like, 7 a.m., like, I mean, it really takes a true monster, psychopath, I don't know what you, word to use to, to do that. It's not like in the dead of night or something like that. It's like, what? Anyway, carrying on. Grandma. Yep. But he also called Brenner. Called Brenner after that? Yes, because, and we know he called Brenner. I mean, we know just because we know. We, you know, we can't say because we weren't there, but we just know because to tell him he was coming in and get on, you know, meet it in the gate. Uh, so the video was, I think, 727. And that video is from inside of Brenner's camper. Do you see that? I like Nate Eaton's face here. He's like, sorry, what? There was a time lapse video taken on Dylan's phone, which really is incredible evidence. I hate to think if that didn't happen. And um, I believe it was an iPhone. I have an Android. I'm part of the Android club. <laughs> but if you just if you just swipe the screen, even on an Android, you could you could literally activate the camera. It's just amazing that somehow. Brainer must have swiped the phone somehow and a time-lapse video was made and it caught him on camera cleaning a gun and he had blood on his arm and on his shirt. Like, oh my word. It's not outside, it's in his camper. So you're saying within 30 minutes that morning, after the call to grandma, after I've got to get the, the grain in the shed, mm -hmm. that he, he was likely killed. Yep, everything happened within like 32 minutes. Any idea why? Don't you? Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to listen. Any idea why they may reveal a possible motive here? It's interesting to hear just the gut feel that they got of Brainer. Uh, thank you so much, Mary Ann. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'll count that towards my birthday gifts. <laughs> Yesterday was my birthday. Thank you so, so much. Snap moment. First time when I got there and the drain truck was there, Brenner was talking about how Dylan backed into his horse gate in the in the pen mm -hmm. he was a little frustrated about it he didn't think a whole lot about it at the time but that must have been it so oh you're thinking that morning when he was putting in the truck he may have hit the gate or maybe i, I guess or yeah or jim backed it in and was just i don't know i, I really don't know yeah we don't we don't see already there dylan's dad was like talking about a time where Brenner was showing that he's super frustrated about the smallest of things. Like, he seems to have a really short fuse, right? I don't know if Dylan's the one who actually got the truck in the shed. We know Dylan is the one who got the truck to the property. Whether or not Brenner met him right outside because he was mad that Dylan came in, or whether Dylan backed it in and then it happened, but it was still all within... Brenner's know. a dumbass, so maybe he backed it into the yeah. gate. It's um, wild to me that they had that video there because I guess you don't know, and it might come out of court, how that video was recorded. Was it recording that whole time? What no, no. So we, like I said, we clarified that. Um, that was one of our huge questions. Is there more video that we don't know about? And before the charges came out, we we were working on a couple pleas. So we already knew the charges were coming. We knew you know, Brenner's pretty much told his defense attorney, I did this. There were some pleas offered that Justin and I declined. Um, so Box Elder's uh, prosecuting attorney, he said, we needed to have every ounce of evidence in order to make a decision on a plea or not. You see that? You see that? I hope you guys are listening. Also, I didn't say it earlier, but like when they said, whoa, it was taken inside uh, Brenner's trailer as well. Wow, quite something, huh? Yeah, snap moment. Dylan backed into a horse gate. I mean, to get so angry 
with him over such small things. It's just examples, you know. <laughs> Judy says, OMG, trolls. Are there trolls in the house? Do we have trolls? <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry. The mods are on it. Okay. Yes, that's that's true as well. Old Exit Pay says, this reminds me of the Murdoch case and Paul's video hearing Alex's voice on it, right? Thank you so much, Donna Stewart. Really appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for the birthday wishes. Really appreciate that. Chloe, 1201. Damn. Thank you so much. And then we confirmed again that there's there's no other video. Um, it drove us crazy. How did that phone start recording? It has drove us crazy. Well, Papa Bear says the video was from the guy's phone rather than Dylan's phone. My understanding is that it's from Dylan's phone. Not? I thought it was from Dylan's phone. Must I, must I go back a little bit and listen? Wait, let's go back a little bit here. Please. So we already knew the charges were coming. We knew... You know, Brenner's pretty much told his defense attorney, I did this. There were some pleas offered that Justin and I declined. Um, so Box Elder's uh, prosecuting attorney, he said, we needed to have every ounce of evidence in order to make a decision on a plea or not. And then we confirmed again that there's, there's no other video. Um, it's drove us crazy. How did that phone start recording? It has drove us crazy. Well, I got thinking about it, so I had a couple old iPhone 8s at the house that I was saving for Dylan, because I always save the old ones. Your screen can be locked, and within one swipe, you have a video recording on the old software. So, Yes, from what I understood from the document we read and everything, I'm just making sure that it's not, um, I'm not assuming, you know, from what I read, it was on Dylan's phone. Because they also found, sorry to pause it there, they also found Dylan's phone. It's Dylan's phone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they found Dylan's phone in the pond after draining the loosened pond. And then they extracted that evidence from it. Okay, just checking. I always check. If someone asks a question, I'm always like, wait a minute. Let's check. Let's check. Uh, thank you so much, Wendy. Okay. And you guys you guys know. I'm going to put it back on now. Don't worry. I'm just checking that you guys know who Brainer is, right? Someone earlier was like, who's Brainer? Let me just quickly find something. Uh, it could be. I made a whole thing. Let's see this. Where is it? It's coming. Hold on. Okay. So that's his grandpa. That's not Brenner. I'll show you now. This is Brenner. And what I didn't mention in the last stream is I think he's he's either w literally wearing Dylan's cap in that picture, but we don't know when that picture was taken. So that has been speculated for a long time. Is he like literally wearing Dylan's cap? Or is this John Deere type of cap? I think it's a John Deere cap. Is it not just quite a a common cap for farmers to have. Maybe they all got one of these caps. You know what I mean? Maybe it was sponsored or something. I don't know. But interesting. This is James Brainer, and he has been formally charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body, in case you didn't know. And yeah, the caps do look identical. I just wonder if it's literally Dylan's cap. When was that picture taken? And also, or... Do they all have these caps? That would be interesting. I still don't know the answer to that. Uh, hello to the docket. The docket, you guys, is our document hunter. He's in chat here with us. Thank you so much for being here. We got some uh, more documents coming your way soon, which I'm going to have to work through and bring to you. I'm very excited. Okay, let me put this back on the screen. I'm pretty sure when Brenner took the phone, started, you know, he just hit the wrong button. Just hit the wrong swipe and had no clue it would make it start recording but for even the amazing the, amazing. Yeah, the camera lens to even show that it could have amazing. been that is amazing right the camera lens it could have been flipped over any other way uh kairi says ty corbin who's most knowledge sorry let me not watch most knowledgeable about this case is in your chat he's a local he would be a great person to talk to you about this case well, thank you so much, uh, Kyrie, Kiri. I hope I'm saying it right. And T.Y. Corbin, welcome to the chat. I'll have a look for your comments if I could see them. Easy. Just amazing, all of it. I just, yep. I can't even believe it's it. It's unreal. Like you said on one of your videos, a needle in a haystack. How? Yeah. 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 So the other question that people have been asking is, all right, they've charged him with aggravated murder, but they don't have his body, Dylan's right. body. Are you more confident now that you might get an answer or that you might find them yourselves? I'm more confident. Well, 
Jordan Meyer says, did she say Brenner admitted? It seems so. Annie was going to, you know, tell them where the body is, but then it would be part of some kind of a plea deal, which they declined because they're like, this guy's not going to get out after like 10 years. No way. So they're going to look for him themselves, which, yeah, I think that, I think that's pretty cool. We'll find him. Without Brenner. I don't think he needs a plea deal. I don't think he needs any. I don't think he ever needs to get out. So I we're gonna find him. We're gonna go this when the snow's done. We'll we'll find him. I'm positive of it. Yeah. Well, we're not we're not the same people we were nine months ago when we first sat down and talked. We all. were disorganized. We were terrified. We didn't have law enforcement helps. We didn't know who to turn for. We didn't know about all these elite groups. I mean. There's over 15 groups that have hundreds of people that are willing to come spend their summer in Lucent. We were out there running around just trying to looking find... Looking for the needle in the haystack. Looking for the needle in the haystack. Just just not knowing the different technologies of different groups. And then we were getting a lot of you know backlash from Box Elder not letting people come in. Well, this summer it can't be that way. Charges are filed. They cannot tell organizations they can't come in. Okay, so... Seven Right? So they know this stuff. They know, okay, we're going back in. We're going to be searching. And I really do hope that they find Dylan. I really hope that he can be put to rest at home, that they can find him, that they can finally have those answers as well. As very sad as it is. Yes. 727, 730-ish, he's cleaning the gun. The phone is found. Dylan's phone is found in the pond, which is then recovered, and they found this video. Do you think then that Dylan might be somewhere in the vicinity of the pond? Because how is James Brenner? I mean, he, I guess he could have taken him anywhere. Well, but if if you remember and through our previous interviews, then the timelines match up because then Dylan's phone, and I'd have to look back at my notes to be exact, leaves the shed property at 743 and goes to Dylan's farm. Then it comes back to the shed property like 30 minutes later. It stays there all day until it's thrown in the pond. Mm, that evening that two, afternoon yeah 251 afternoon so do you think his his body's somewhere in that vicinity i mean we're gonna see what they answer now right i've seen this twice already but we're gonna see it together um i'm still trying to figure out so ty corbin if you know or whoever's local in the chat which pond was the phone found in because they say the lucent pond so to me, it made the most sense that it was the pond at Dylan's camper, not at the grain shed where he stayed, at his farm, right? But now, the way that Dylan's mom explained it, it seems like it was the other the other one. But I thought that one might not be drained because that's like the water source for the area, right? So if you guys know, please let me know. I'd love to clear up exactly which pond it was. Um, but yes, I, I think... Brainer, I mean, let's hear what they say. They will. Well, I'll give you my commentary again. We we think it was. Yeah. Mm. We we think then after everything happened and and there's some stuff that happened, um, we think he was moved. Which is frustrating. Very frustrating because Brainer should have been in jail. Brainer had warrants the day we went looking for Dylan before he was supposed to have been arrested, and he was just walking around with the police there and back and forth for numerous days mm -hmm. they even asked us to that's what i'm just double checking right the lucent pond is the one where everyone went to get water i was just double checking that because that's what i'm understanding from all of this and from the document we read and i'm like are we sure it's not the pond because there was you know the pond where dylan stayed at his like his camper was there that pond was initially drained too Right. So eventually they drained this loosened pond and found Dylan's phone. So that is, it's quite something, huh? Leave the property because we were upsetting Brenner. And he, this whole time he had a warrant to be arrested. What was the warrant for? Do you remember? Felony aggravated assault. Felony warrant. And they asked us to move off the yep, property that we had we permission from the owner to be on. And that's when you observed him moving the garbage. Yeah. Correct. Shed. With Correct. the with the Box Elder Sheriff's Department there, there. at the same time watching the it same was, thing while he had a felony warrant. So. Well, and it was one of the Box Elder Sheriffs that actually went up to the property and said, what are you doing? And he said, oh, spring cleaning. 
Yeah. Do you know, in hindsight, how frustrating that must be for Dylan's parents? That the police were like, yeah, okay, you need to you need to move off the property. You're bothering Brenner now. <laughs> like he's he's spring cleaning and you're disturbing him now. And yet. I know hindsight's 2020, but like, damn, that must be so frustrating because there was already a warrant out for Brenner's arrest just based on him having firearms and things. I mean, damn. You should see the shed in his place. Yeah, I think you sent me some did, photos after yes. the fact. It, it was it was not No, spring clean. cleaning. I even hate to talk about it in the fact that we're talking about like his body. Like it just feels... Yeah, it, it just feels morbid. Like I, I, I don't know how because, to describe it, but how how does it feel as parents to know that this has been going on for nine months? So we're I don't want to say callous, but no. we've heard a lot. We've talked a lot. Yeah. I know when. <laughs> I like it. he's like, well, I don't want to say callous, but he means. I mean, um, they've they've been dealing with this for nine months, so. By the way, if you're only rolling into the stream now, welcome. If you know nothing about this case, I would highly recommend checking out the episode I did just a few days ago where we did an entire recap of this case. If I just show you very quickly this, Dylan Rounds um, has, was missing since May 27th. Um, he was last seen in Montello, Nevada, and his truck and boots were found about five miles west of his camper, and Dylan's remains have not been found. So that is the very brief overview that the, we did a whole deep dive i hope that you will check it out if you don't know what on earth we're talking about here or if you just need a little recap i'll make sure to link it in the comments it's already linked in the description box for you okay so we're looking at that but i like how um, dylan's uh, dad there is like well i don't want to say we feel callous you know and then his mom is like no no because <laughs> i get it it's just so long of dealing with it i mean one isn't even desensitized you're just so emotionally guarded and shielded because you just don't know what to expect next i mean they've had a very disappointing experience from what i've seen you know with the police and they still haven't found their son i mean it's it's just it's very sad and i really hope they will i heard about the video of him wa washing the blood off of his hands and the gun they edit some of this stuff out but uh, it hit me hard. I got so angry. I was so angry, and I wasn't supposed to tell anybody. And I, I, it it was a long weekend. Well, and so it was a whole new thing. Well, and the cold heartedness to it. I think that's what really hits yeah. the cold heartedness of. I just shot this kid. I'm gonna go clean myself up and then figure this out. I think that was the biggest shot. We always knew Brando did something, but I think then we found out the cold blooded aspect and. That was when I heard about the video, I was probably 10 feet away from where Dylan and Brenner were working in my shop the year previous, about this time on the tarp of the grain truck. And I had a recording of Brenner, Don Hatley and a kid that worked for me. Dylan was gone and I was watching the cameras through my phone and Jim was talking kind of jealous of Dylan and how he didn't treat his pickup good and this and that. And when he was a kid, he would, he wouldn't have done that. And I remember telling Dylan. You see, they were like, he's like, if I, when I was a kid, I wouldn't have done it that way. You know, he was just annoyed a uh, brainer with, with Dylan. It sounds like the whole time, just projecting his own upbringing beliefs. I don't know what onto this poor kid who actually owned the farm. Uh, Brenner was a squatter on the farm, helping out with some odd jobs. And I'm sure then when Dylan fired Don, who was Brenner's friend, I think that also would have made Brenner feel like, oh, this, this little kid is so disrespectful. You know, teach him a lesson type thing. I can just imagine that type of thinking, which is just so sad because Dylan owned the farm. Um, and he was just focusing. I mean, he's so focused just on those seeds. He just wanted to park the grain, the, the truck in the grain shed just to protect his seeds. And he was so excited about, um, the upcoming harvest and everything. Everything was going great working on this project for so long. And this 
this old man who is innocent until proven guilty, who's a suspect in the murder of Dylan Rounds. You know, there's a time lapse video of him cleaning a gun and with blood on his arms and shirt. It's it's just terrible. You know, this this Jim guy, he ain't your friend. I mean, I didn't think that he would obviously do anything like this. And Dylan just kind of laughed and said, ah, he's just kind of a jackass. That's just how the way he is, you know. And hmm. so it, it hit me hard, 10 feet away from where that conversation was, you know. And I, it was a hard weekend for yeah. me. Well, and that leads us to something else, because in the press release that Box Elder released and the article they had written, they keep, they put in quotes, family friend. Brenner was no. not a family friend. He hung around with Dylan a little bit, and Dylan helped him have a job. In fact, what was it, two years before that when they had the pigs? Yeah. Dylan yeah. had bought a bunch of pigs, and Brenner was kind of there helping him. And This was all out at Lucent. You no, know, this is at my grandfather's place that we bought there by climb rest by climb here in here in eastern yeah. idaho here in eastern jefferson idaho. county yeah, on county line okay so did he follow dylan to lucent no no don so there was he didn't know of dylan before but uh, i like the way nate Ethan asked the question did he follow dylan there so now they're going to explain that um Artemis says brainer is seething with envy and jealousy yep uh, Dwayne's prospecting adventure says, I'm curious why he made a video of himself. He, I don't think he made one of himself on purpose. I think it was a swipe of a button unless Dylan swiped the phone, you know, last minute. That's also sad to think about, right? Um, but it's probably, <laughs> probably definitely a mistake, which is thankfully so. Haley moved him over to loosen he was in nevada in montello and there was a whole bunch of bad stuff that went on that was never documented by the police department because they don't call him and so then he moved over to the don's like well i got a place over here you can stay and then that's when he moved over when dylan originally was looking at that property when he first started working on it he wasn't there right mm -mm. No. He was in Montello. He was in Montello. He was not there. So. But then he moved. Yeah. When Dylan Just got settled of. in, he moved over. Yep. Yep. And you guys always had a bad feeling about Brenner. Just I did. I didn't. Well, you know, always had a gut feel about Brenner. But that's the thing. Not that someone would assume. I mean, this this guy could kill, you know. It's just like, oh, this guy's he's a bit of an asshole. You know, that would be the experience, but he turns out to be a little bit more than a bit of an asshole, right? Unfortunately. Okay. I just never liked the guy. You know, Dylan was 18. I mean, I couldn't tell him, don't be around these people. I mean, I tried to tell him he wasn't his friend, but mm -hmm. no, he was never a family friend mm -hmm. at all. So that's well, whoever put that doesn't know what they're saying. What should happen to him if he's found guilty? Well, right now he's facing the death penalty, and I think we'll end up pushing it the whole way. Um, when we, were, I, I think so too. I don't. When we do were any, presented with the plea, and and we've said it publicly many times, you know, if we have to make a deal with the devil to get our son back, we'll do it. And then we were presented with it, and we couldn't do it. There's no way we're going to let that man walk in five or ten years. Uh, uh it's not going to happen. Did he say? I'll that must have been so difficult. To be like, okay, here's the plea deal. He will tell you where the body is. And then if they find it, okay, then he's going to be out in 10 years or whatever. And they're like, oh, hell no. Hell no. Uh, I don't, should I say Ty Corbin? Ty Corbin. T I was saying T-Y, but I think it's Ty Corbin. Great to crime. It has been speculated that Dylan's video... Didn't video the gate, and Brenner accidentally hit a button on the side of the phone to start it recording again. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, that could be it too, right? Oh, my word. It's just amazing that that video was caught. I'll tell you where the body is. Mm -hmm. So he has said he knows. Yeah. And do you think that if you're patient, he'll tell? I don't know. I, I don't truly know. don't know. I, I hope not. I hope we find it and I hope we can fry it as yes. much as yes. You know. Well, what do you want to say to the public that's been following this and 
people people need to realize everybody wants to send Justin and I their, their condolences, their I'm sorry's. Um, we've known this for a long time. Um, like I said, this is a win. This is this is don't this is a win. do not tell us you're sorry because we've been fighting nine months to have Brenner held accountable and we finally got it done. That's that's not sad. I mean, the the story it and what happened sad. is sad, but well, but I, this is a win. I appreciate everybody following yes. us and doing this because without all that. There's been millions of times that I've just thought I'm good with what's going to happen and how it's going to happen. She just kept pushing it, and and thank God for that. But it's because of all the people support. It is well, and that's that's how. And we I got, appreciate everybody. That's how we got everything moved to the SBI. That's how everything started rolling. Is when all of. I'm just going to pause it for a second there. I mean, would you guys be able to do that if there's a, a plea deal on the table and it's like okay. I'll tell you where, man, your loved one's body is. That I'm telling, that must have been the hardest decision ever. To be like, yep, no, we we're not gonna go, go with that. We're gonna continue to search. I cannot imagine how difficult that decision must have been. MP, thank you so much. You say happy birthday, Gisela. You are so deserving of all the love and kindness sent your way. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Of Dylan's followers and his newfound family started sending letters and phone calls and just blew it up to the point that they knew they couldn't ignore it. And that's yes. what got the momentum. So when I say this is a win for us, I mean, this is a win for everybody who helped us try right. to get the help that we needed. And this is a win for all of us. At the first, I never realized there could be so many bad. So you heard that they're happy about it. This is a win for them. And they're like everyone wants to send condolences and they understand that, but they're like, this is good this is this is a win for them um you know that brainer has been charged now that they've got more evidence now <laughs> pretty good evidence huh uh so far also dirty clean 555 said does a wrench mean you're a mod yes um and sending dollars gets my message to pop up no i i pop your message up irrespective i'm not a channel that only pops up super chats or stickers i always glance at the chat and see you know what i could pop up so thank thank you so much for subscribing really appreciate it had people on the earth and as time went on i i don't know we both kind of got into a little depression for a little while and as it went on the people that were following and supporting kind of got us out of it and kind of got us going again you know and it's been so what i want to say is thank you i guess yes. that's all i'm saying but yeah yeah, without everybody who started pushing so hard in August and September, I truly believe Box Elder would have backed off again. Um, and and knowing what they've known for as long as they've known yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. And still not out there trying to recover Dylan is, it's disgusting. They, it they, is. It, they know he's out there. They know Brennan murdered him and they've known for a long time. Oh man, that must be so frustrating. Uh, Josh says they must be exhausted. Very tragic. They have to endure this. Yes. And yet they still stay so strong. I'm really, I admire them. I admire their strength. It's amazing what they're doing. They're just like, nope, not giving up. We're still going out there. We will find him. Nope, no plea deal for us. Thank you very much. Long time and still nothing. Yeah. Very disappointing. I'm sure you've learned a lot. Yes. And yeah, a lot so, no parent a lot you ever didn't wants want to learn. To yes. But hopefully future families that might right. be in this awful circumstance can use yep. what you've learned and this is just the beginning of a whole new phase yes as, as they say the the, the uh, wheels of justice can go at a grinding slow speed mm -hmm. but at least you have charges yeah yes and that we know right you guys oh my word the wheels of justice they turn slowly we've got some trials coming up in april one being leticia stauch like at last oh my word it's that's been a while right we see it with so many cases where it's like, damn, this wheels of justice turn real slow. Thank you, WL22. You say happy birthday, G. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys are so sweet. And hopefully in a few weeks, months, you have Dylan. Yeah. We will. And and all the other families need to realize would be, if you push, I mean, you, you can eventually get them to do what they swear to do. They swear to protect and serve. Make them do it. Don't let them scare you. Don't let them put you in the corner. Make them do it. I don't think it's every every law enforcement. Does it not remind you of David Robinson? 
in the Daniel Robinson case. Michelle V says, all these families, I just can't. They are beasts for their children, right? They never give up. I mean, I wouldn't give up either if a loved one was missing. So I understand that. But still, I can't. I, it's just like when you, you don't know what you're going to go through, of course, right? You're presented with a situation. And in this case, it's just like, okay, he can tell you exactly where Dylan's body is. But then he's going to get out early. Yeah, that must be such a difficult one. Because you so badly want to know. You so badly want to know. But yet you don't want to know at the cost of the guy getting out and just living his life. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. I oh, no, I absolutely not. To have this one. Yeah, and no, it absolutely isn't. There's tons of cases that are solved so fast like they should be. You know, we worked with, I worked with a little bit of Bonneville County to get Dylan's pickup processed, mm -hmm. and they were very quick on mm -hmm. the spot to come and help and do whatever they needed to do. Yeah. Gave me yeah. some words of encouragement and, and, and then some advice. And we had the Idaho State Police do some stuff with that. And they were quick and very responsive. So, I mean, there's law enforcement that's good in general. Well, thank you both. I won't give. <laughs> the, is, law enforcement's good in general. My condolences because you said <laughs> you don't want that. But in a way. <laughs> You know, right, it's yeah. condolences, congratulations, however you want to say it. Just know yeah. that people are thinking about you and care about this. And um, just the beginning, or not the beginning, but... It's a new beginning. beginning yeah. <laughs> it's a new beginning, they say, you guys. Yes. So that's the latest interview on East Idaho News with Dylan Rounds' parents. Um, let me know what you thought. What did you think was the most surprising or the most interesting from the interview while I look at your comments quickly Julie says plea for a life sentence yeah uh, Winona Damara says even if I never found the body of a loved one I'd never give the murderer a deal never yes Janet says no plea deal he might talk or brag in prison that too as well right um, 1979 ACR says, I'm ready for Billy Wagner's trial. Oh, I missed this one. Brenna Gator. Happy birthday weekend, G. <laughs> Thank you so much. Brenna Gator. That's such a cool name. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, NC Rain says, how do I become a member? If you go to my website, grizzlytruecrime.com, there's a link there if you're struggling to find the link here. But mods do share the link uh, throughout the stream. Okay. Let's see what else you guys are saying. You're sharing lots of sunflowers, which is amazing. Thank you for doing that for Dylan. Like this. Okay. Thank you, Copper Horse. All right. Yeah, Phil says, shocking how long it took to arrest this guy. Right? Man, okay, okay. I'm just seeing what else you guys are saying. They are strong people. Yes, indeed. Uh, TN Wildflower says, I'm surprised JB admitted it. I guess once they said, well, we've got video of you, like literally cleaning a gun with blood on your shirt and arm. Maybe at that point he's like, uh, okay. You know, which he didn't have to, but maybe at that point he cracked. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, Ellie says, I hope they are at peace as much as they can be. Yes. And someone was asking earlier, have I been following the, the Vallow case? Yes, I do have a playlist for that case. But if you guys want all the latest documents read to you and all the latest updates, that The Docket, who's here in chat, uh, the channel is called The Docket 71, okay? Um, the Docket is our document hunter, Big E. And he's actually covered every single update that you can possibly imagine in the Velo case. So if you do want to go and check that out, you can as well. Um, I am following along. And yes, I know that there's also a trial coming up for that. There we go. You did it. <laughs> Thank you for becoming a member. We'll have a, a member stream again soon. Yes, Janet says, finding the phone was a blessing. I mean, that's where it started, right? Drain the pond. Oh, my word. There's a phone. Can you imagine the day? I wish I was there that day when it happens. Like, to see that, to be like, look, man, we feel like it could be in here. And then to actually drain the loosened pond, which from what, my understanding is the water source of the area. I wonder, you know how how they got that right like okay we need to we need to 
This is the only thing we can do. And then they do it. And then there is a phone. Oh my gosh. Imagine it. And then you actually take that phone. And after it being in the water for however long, you can still extract information. And that information turns out to be a time lapse video. And it shows James Brainer cleaning a gun with blood on his arms and shirt. I mean, it's absolutely incredible that that was on there and that they were able to extract it after all that time. That's amazing, right? Yes, Mary Ann says, I just hope they can bring him home. Same, same. Yeah, this is what I was wondering. <laughs> I want a refund. Oh, you got lemon lemons. You might like my second channel. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, get snarky. John Deere caps are given out for free and also with purchases of farm equipment. That's what I was wondering. With purchases of farm equipment, not that Brainer would have bought it, but maybe Dylan and his family got some of those caps and maybe Dylan was nice and gave him a cap, right? Yes. Thank you, Phil, for watching my shorts. I really appreciate it. Yes, the stalker in Washington. Go check out my YouTube shorts, you guys. That story is absolutely insane. Following that along as well. Okay, so that's that's the update I have for you today. Again, if you want the full timeline update, all the latest documents and everything in this case, check out the stream that I had with you guys just a few days ago. I think it was like two or three days ago. Yesterday was my birthday, so I wasn't here yesterday. But let's see when it was. It was actually on March 4th. Time flies, you see. So I'm going to put that in chat here in case you haven't seen it, then maybe you can go and watch that. And I will see you guys very soon again. There's some new Coburger documents that just dropped. Thanks to the docket. I'm going to go through them. There's a lot of pages. But it's very interesting. So I'm sure I'll see you again soon. Uh, welcome to membership. All right. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy that you're a grizzly. Okay. Okay, everyone, so make sure that you like, make sure that you subscribe with a bell on because I only get three notifications every 24 hours and we've already used up two out of three, okay? If you want to make sure that you get notifications every time, even when I don't, if I use more than three, Patreon is the place to go. I put all the notifications there and it works every time. So <laughs> I will, I'll see you very soon. I'm going to go, it's now already um, one o'clock in the morning, okay? It's one o'clock in the morning <laughs> for me. But uh, I'm probably still going to be with beady eyes in the night, okay, just looking through these new Coburger documents. It's going to be interesting. And I will see you either if it's like really riveting. I'll see you very soon. Otherwise, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm sure it will be interesting either way. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Let me quickly turn slow mode off so that you guys can chat as fast as you want. And because that's always nice at the end when you guys want to say goodbye. And I will see you again very soon. Okay, bye.